I gotta say, I think you guys are sleeping on... It's in, and I quote, it's insane to me that Pepe and Maka are both Ronies. Out of all of the, the drafts, I thought that was the best. I sent it to my Discord. I appreciate, did you attribute it? Did you attribute it? What does it mean? I didn't get it. Pepperoni, Macaroni. They're so different, and yet they're both Ronies. That's so we It's inspiring. Hey, librarian, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Can I explain the, the jokes? If you need an explanation, here you go. The worst one for sure was Juan de Fuca straight sounds like something John Malkovich would say in rounders. How does it make sound like uh, something John Malkovich would say in rounders? Rounders is a poker movie where John Malkovich famously has a bad Russian accent. It sounds like he would say that to Matt Damon. He'd be like, Juan de Fuca straight? Because we were camping in Juan de Fuca Provincial Park. So I, you know, it was on my mind. I think there's really something to the, to the good morning to good evening tweet. Good morning to good night, I should say. Because good morning is a normal thing to say. Good day is something you only say if you're a medieval time traveler. Like if someone came up to me and was like, good day, I would be confused. I would be, I would be, uh, first thing I would think of is you are not from around here temporally, not geographically. S the good afternoon, very normal. I'm a, I'm a good afternoon, good morning guy. Let me, let me tell you, it's based on where we're at in the day. If I see someone and it's before noon, I say good morning. If I see someone and it's afternoon, but before dinner time, which I know is subjective, I say good afternoon. And then if it's after dinner time, I say have a good night. I don't say good night. Because good night is like too intimate. That's like something you only say to your, your friends or your loved ones. You can't be at the grocery store 15 minutes before close and they say, you know, here's your food. Do you want a receipt? And you say, no, thank you. Good night. Because they'd, be like, <clears throat> they'd be like wanting to throw hands. They'd be like, what do you mean good night? Do I look like I'm in my pajamas right now? Do I look like I'm going to bed? Does it seem like we're going to spend the next 45 years together? I don't think so. So you say, have a good night. Good evening. Only Dracula says it. If you see someone and they say good evening, you can't not say it in a voice like Vincent Price welcoming someone to like a haunted house. Good evening. Even the only other time you hear it is from like a, a Mater D or something like that. Good evening is not something normal people say on the regular, at least, at least according to me. And then good night, totally normal, which is messed up right that the only thing that's changing is the time of the day i'm just no wonder people have a hard time navigating the social complexities of the world like good morning perfectly normal to say good night how dare you uh assume we have such intimacy with one another the only thing that changed is like it's from sun up to sundown how about howdy howdy would work what did it do 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 Hey, howdy, hey. You know what I'm talking about? Riders in the Sky. You've been listening to a lot of the Toy Story 2 soundtrack. Anybody else? I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle as I go quite merrily along. What was the other tweet? Tragic, si tragic Sands. That's just because like, we were on Vancouver Island, and once you get far enough west on Vancouver Island, all of the signs that say, like, Welcome to Blank City are in Comic Sans, which is fucking insane. Like, they, they had to pick a font to say, like, Welcome to Shirley! And the town is called Shirley, and the restaurant in Shirley is called Shirley Delicious. When I drove by, me with my urban sensibilities, look at that, a pun-named restaurant. Bet it sucks. Me in the provincial park, reading uh, Western Vancouver Island Monthly, finding out Shirley Delicious has been chosen as a top 20 restaurant in the entire country. Oh, we gotta go there. Driving back the other direction, the parking lot stuffed, people are parked on the highway. I'm like, I'm not stopping at Shirley Delicious, it's too busy. But I, I can't believe that like of all the fonts you could choose, Vancouver Island said straight up, we're going, we're going Comic Sans for the whole, for the whole island. Except Victoria. Victoria takes itself seriously. I got kind of uh, 
ratted on a little bit. People were very upset with me. I said, I know I'm from Vancouver, but Victoria is weird as hell. They said, what do you mean? I didn't reply, but we parked our car and right outside of our car, there was just a dude. He was like at least 38 years old. He had an empty water bottle and he was doing like hacky sack with it in the parking lot. And he didn't look like he lived in the parking lot. Like he just looked like he was well dressed. He was well groomed, but he was playing hacky sack with like this empty water bottle. And I, I looked at Kate and I was like, I'm not sure like I should park here. It just doesn't feel right. And she was like, oh, he's just like having fun. And then he took the water bottle and fucking yeeted it. David De Gea style. Like he, he kicked it like as far through the underground parking lot as he could. And I was like, this is just a weird energy. Then he went over and there were like these three foot tall traffic cones, you know, the kinds that are like, don't um, drive your car here. And he just started kicking the shit out of it, like judo style. Like he was, he was just sta squaring up with the traffic cones and then kicking them. And then one of them fell over and uh, he jogged away and he got into his car and he drove away. And what's insane is that his car had like the name of a business on it. Like, I, I don't know if he was just decompressing, and this is like what he does to let off some steam, but <laughs> it was really weird. It was not surely delicious. I'm not going to out the business, because then I googled the business, and I looked at the picture of the owner, and he was not the owner. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to hold it against the business, just because one of their employees is like, you know, blowing off steam in the parking lot. If it was the owner, I would have been like, I'm never going there. Camping was fun, by the way. It was really cold, though. Was it very rural? Well, yesterday was the first time I showered since Friday morning at like 5.45 a.m. They did have, um, they had toilets, but there was no, it wasn't even like a porta potty. It was just a, a seat that emptied, emptied out into a large pit. And then there was, admittedly, there was a faucet that spat out cold water. So you could use cold water to, you, you could drink it which is good because human beings need it to live. Anytime I go camping, I feel like, um, I feel like a connection with my ancestors. You too? Or am I crazy? <clears throat> no? Nah? I mean, my ancestors, they basically slept in a tent. Not like, you know, 300 years ago, but like 2,000 plus years ago. Or they made like a lean-to or something like that. Also, like, you don't realize, you, you take sleeping in a house for granted, if only because of the safety. Because, like, when you're in a tent, there were signs everywhere that were like, do not use scented deodorant or a bear will fucking kill you and everyone will hate you because then we have to kill the bear. Is that what you want? Is it, you want us to kill a bear for eating you? I thought you loved animals. Then you got the audacity to use a dove for men deodorant, attracting a bear, getting killed, and then the bear gets killed? Bears are relatively smart creatures, and if one of them makes the connection between humans and easily available food, it might start seeking out campsites and homes, it might get aggressive. And in that case, it might have to be euthanized, killed. Not just for human safety, but because it might pass that behavior along to its cubs, and along to their cubs, and suddenly, the wilderness isn't so wild anymore. So, I mean, I was occasionally, the first night, I just slept super well. I slept from like 9.20 till 5.45 a.m. Now, you, you wake up a couple times in the night because I think your brain is like, what the hell? Oh, right, I'm camping. And then you go back to sleep. The second night, though, I, <laughs> I woke up like every 45 minutes. And sometimes, I swear to God, sometimes you just hear like a little rustling outside of the tent and you'd be like, I'm just going to relax. Then sometimes there, like, it, you could tell it was a bird. It would get like close to the, because it has like furtive movements, right? It would get close to the tent and you'd hear like, fa 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 But sometimes I, I don't think that it was a cougar, but sometimes I heard like a purring sound. And I was like, I'll, I'll tell you two things. The first thing I thought of was, I don't want to have to square up with a cougar. But the second thing was, I was glad that I had potentially an opportunity to prove that I was not going to get killed by a cougar. Because I read all the literature. The literature about bear safety was like, an ounce of prevention is worth 100 pounds of cure. If you see a bear, basically, 
I hope you wrote your will. Here's some shit you can do that will make you feel like you have a chance, but you don't have a chance. That's basically what it said. The, the literature on cougars was basically like, you'd rather not see a cougar, but you know what? If the cougar wants to get down, you got a chance. It, it basically said like, square up, grab a stick, and just go to town. And I was like, all right, I, I could give it a try at least. Coyote, one coyote I'm not even concerned about. I don't think a coyote would try to eat me. I think a coyote, a coyote might try to steal my kid, but because I'm a good dad, it, it's not gonna get it. I keep, the, I keep my kid in my sight. No coyote's gonna get me. Cougar, that might be close to a 50-50. What is this conversation? You, no disrespect, you guys are so mentally weak. People are like, if I saw a squirrel, ew, I would just let it kill me. You're, like, you got some shit inside of you. You got, you got some fire inside of you, okay? You, your, your genes have made it, like, this far. From the primordial soup until now. If I see a cougar, I'm not, like, you know, trying to jot down my last will and testament. Like, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a chance. New York Giants versus uh, New England Patriots 2007. We're going for it, man. Who wins in a fight? Cougar or human male 77.2 kilograms? <laughs> Strong legs and heart and lungs. It is possible for a human to win a fight against a cougar, such as the case of Travis Kaufman, who choked a juvenile cougar to death when attacked while jogging. That would be me, for sure. An average human has a small chance against a cougar, let alone an elite strongman or an experienced fighter. Dude, can you imagine an elite strongman against a cougar? What is he going to do? Pick it up and carry it for 300 feet and then put it down and turn around and then carry it back? Hello, honey. Hi. I just say goodbye, daddy. Goodbye, honey. Have a good day today. How you doing? Okay. Good. I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Maybe it's your favorite song. As I row quite merrily along. And they say, hey, aren't you glad you're single? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. <laughs> oh, Emmy Lou. Oh, Emmy Lou. Though we've done our share of walking, she this is why we had her talking. I've got, she is dancing. <laughs> I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle as I row quite merrily along. We gotta go. Though we've done a share of dreaming, this is why I never fell. I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you too, honey. We had such a fun time this weekend, right? Make sure to tell everyone at daycare what you did this weekend. What was the best part of camping? Making s'mores, so true. Campfire? Camp? We didn't even have a campfire. She's got a false memory. I will say, you guys gotta stop lighting the forest on fire. I've literally never been camping and had a campfire. Cause it's like by the time we, go, by the time it's warm enough to camp, there's so many fires that campfires are banned across the entire province. Thanks a lot, everybody. How did you make the s'more? We had a camping stove. I mean, you still got to eat. I'm not going to eat, like, you know, just hot rods for three days. I'll, I'll die. That stuff comes down and pollutes our airspace. Me rolling coal in Alabama in the wintertime. Hell yeah, brother. They'll take it from my cold, dead hands. Me inhaling smoke from a fire that didn't start in exactly my geographic position. What the hell, guys? Chill out with all the fires. Yeah, I know. I don't know why everyone's pretending to be so serious. I'm getting called out for, like, glamping. I say this with no exaggeration. You'll hear the same thing on Kate's stream. First night, we slept in the tent, right? There were other tent sleepers. Second night, all the tent sleepers went home. They said it's too motherfucking cold. The only people that were left in the campground was us in the tent and then, like, 30 RVs. Last time we went camping, like, five years ago... It was a little glamping just because there was a shower. So you could put a toonie into a coin slot and you could take like a four minute shower. This shit was camping, man. We were in the, we, we did bring a camping stove. We were in the woods. Also, after, I, not that I didn't have a great time, because I did have a great time. If this is camping, 
give me some more glamping, man. Best part of camping is like uh, being outside, cooking amazing food that for some reason just tastes better because you're in the outdoors, going on a hike, seeing uh, some animals in nature that you wouldn't uh, otherwise see in the city. You don't need the, uh, it's not like a, a, you know what, measuring contest. I would, I would love to like be in the woods for three days, but at night you just come back and you sleep. It doesn't have to be a hotel, but even just like, you know, in a, in a cabin or something like that. Go sleep in a cabin, wake up, and then, you know, go for like a, a hike or something. Did your tent come up with, wi come with Wi-Fi? No, I didn't have Wi-Fi. That's why I tweeted an image of my drafts folder. I had no signal. Moreover, we were so far south on Vancouver Island, I had to keep my phone in flight mode because it, it thought I was roaming in America. How much weed did you smoke? I smoked zero weed. I was there with my two-year-old. I did drink five beers on Friday and five beers on Saturday, though. How did it make me feel? It made me feel like we should have bought a 2-4 instead of a 12-pack. <laughs> we were in... Also, I got, I got a real problem with Vancouver Island, okay? We were in a place called China Beach. Here's one that'll mess you up. It's, in, it's China Beach in Juan de Fuca Provincial Park. It's right next to another beach. You know what the beach is called? Chin Beach. For someone who doesn't live in Vancouver Island, very confusing when you're, you go to your GPS and you're like China Beach and it's like, do you mean Chin Beach? And I'm like, I, I don't think so. But it's like two uh, almost identical text strings that are almost identically positioned on the map. I don't know. Just send it, man. Vancouver Island's got a lot to answer for, honestly. One thing I do like about it, we, we stopped at a town called Sook. That's all I got to say. That's a great place. My friends backpacked right there. Sorry, they, it's not backpacking. They were glam packing. Sorry. Sorry to say. Were you in real Sook or East Sook? Listen, motherfucker, the town's got 10,000 people. You don't get to have an East when you got 10,000 people. Vancouver gets an East, Okay. L.A. gets an East. You got a Tim Hortons, an A&W, and an ICBC. There is no East. There's just Sook, okay? He was in East Sook. Motherfucker, you, you don't even know, man. You don't even know. Okay, slash marker. The adults. Can I tell you, this weekend when we were camping, on the way to the campsite, stopped at a Tim Hortons in Sook, British Columbia, on Vancouver Island. I've said some negative things about... Um, Tim Hortons before, and they immediately knew that I was not one of them. Because here's my impression of everybody else at the Tim Hortons. Hey, can I get the crispy chicken Caesar rice bowl with a mango lassi? I was like, what the hell? Is Tim Hortons, when, when, uh, did I miss like a Tim Hortons reimagination? Hey, can I get a, a crispy chicken protein bowl? Oh, to drink? To do, no, coffee? No, no, no. I won't have coffee. Can I get like a steeped, uh, cold-brewed green tea? Like, it's great. We, we walked up to... I wasn't going to debase myself getting lunch at the Tim Hortons when there was an A&W next door, okay? I will say... I'm going to say one positive thing about Tim Hortons, and it's been a long time since I've said this. My daughter loves donuts. We said we're camping. You know what would be nice to have? Timbits. Sue me. He said one double chocolate glazed donut and a 20 pack of assorted Timbits, please. Lady looks me dead in the face and says that'll be $6.09. And I've, I've never tapped my card faster in my entire life because I was like, she made a huge mistake. <laughs> this, this should be at least $11. And then I uh, took the Timbits back to the table and I was like, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I looked at the menu 20 Timbits is four, $4.99. 20 Timbits is $4.99, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> I get that it's just like dough and sugar, but like you can't buy dough and sugar at that weight for that price now. You can't do it. At least, here's what I'm going to say, because I've been going off on Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons sucks, but at least it's cheap. Subway sucks, and it's expensive as hell. At least Tim Hortons has elevated itself above one restaurant, in my opinion, 
And it's a little insane to me because I used to be, I used to go to bad for Subway. I used, and, but then the kicking chicken sandwich and the new signature subs and the, the, the tip option on the debit machine and then it's $18, it's 1,260 calories. Get a, get a clue. Bro, your sandwiches suck. Know your place. I'm, I'm racking my brain, okay? I'm, I'm like, I'm picturing the world map. You can tell because I'm looking up. There's, I promise there's no world map on my ceiling, okay? I don't even have anything behind me. I wouldn't put anything on the ceiling except a mirror when your mom comes over. Um, just to make sure that the mark on the top of my head has disappeared because I don't want her to be concerned when she's blowing me. Let me start. <laughs> my brain is like, I don't want to think about geography. Make jokes. I don't want to think about geography. Say anything else. Um, 4,400 kilometers away from Kazakhstan to the southeast. It's like 3,000 kilometers. We're in like Laos. Whoa! <laughs> God is my witness. I didn't know you could grow bananas in Laos. I kind of thought bananas were just like a Central and South American thing. But I guess cassava is kind of like a banana, right? Or is cassava kind of like a sweet potato? Why not? I thought it was like a, like a climate thing. I don't know. I'm not saying it's not hella tropical. I'm just saying, you know, it's like you could probably grow olives in like a lot of the world. But if you see olives on the fucking... Cradle, you're going to be like, we're in the Mediterranean. Oh, you didn't know? Ecuador is on the same latitude as Lebanon. No, I didn't, because I don't fucking, I'm not Latitude Andy, you know? This is not twitch.tv slash Latitude Gamer. I'm just trying to live my life. Anyway, we got it right. Why are you so mad? We got it right. Why am I so mad I got it right? Laos. Okay. Uruguay. <laughs> oh! Mm, Argentina? Oh! Now that is a, that's a good performance right there. Holy. The, the, you know what? See, people always look at the tradle in a bubble. And they go, oh, you did, you, it took you four for Tradle today. Yeah, but because it took me four for Tradle, it only took me three for Global. You got to look at, it's like baseball. You don't just look at your slugging percentage or your OBP. You got to combine your slugging and your OBP to get some kind of like weird uh, decimal number greater than one that nobody understands by looking at it, except for people who try to sell you on their advanced stats newsletter. This is not Switzerland. This is... Austria. This is not Austria. This is Romania. He's insane. Good evening. So true. People from Romania be like, good evening. It does look like, um, it does look like a fish from a fish finder. You know, like you'd be driving in the boat with your grandpa. If you saw this thing come up on the fish finder, you'd be like, we got to stop here. That's not like a minnow. That thing's like a largemouth bass. The one. Jet Li. <laughs> heart rate. Heart rate. Voltage heart rate. Dragon. Mummy. 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 Mummy heart rate. Sylvester Stallone, you just, so you just got to play free associate. Ah, Sylve it's, it's the Expendables. Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, Jet Li, Jason Statham. Boom. Gang, gang. Yum, yum, Sylvester Stallone. Yum, yum, Jet Li. Mmm, Jet Li. No, Lundgren. Mmm, <laughs> sorry. Ice cream, so good. Oh, man. What is he doing? Mmm, Slay. You didn't see that? I was gone for three days. I'm still more ahead of the times than you. How, did, how does that happen? Oh, what is that? Gang, gang. Balloon. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Mmm, ice cream so good. You were freakily early on that? I know something one of a kind when I see it, okay? I don't need to wait for some unemployed professional tweeter with 300,000 Twitter followers to spotlight it. I know transcendent art when I see it. Original platform DS, track and field. International track and field 2000. 
Pet Raising Simulation. This is Nintendogs. Okay, I've never played it, but that makes perfect sense. Beyonce played it in the same way that Jason Statham, or sorry, Jason Alexander played Metroid Prime. You've seen the picture. Hang on, I, I forgot for Guess the Game, I've got to get an appropriate ad. It's like the picture of Bob Odenkirk playing Melee. Dude, it's crazy that it's Bob Odenkirk and David Cross playing Melee. I think the true millennial Gen Z divide is whether you think that David Cross is more famous or Bob Odenkirk is more famous. Now, I know now Bob Odenkirk is more famous. But for like 15 years, it was like David Cross and then also the tall guy who does comedy with him. David Cross was in Scary Movie 2. He was on Arrested Development. He had huge stand-up comedy albums and tours. Best thing that ever happened to his career was the second term of George W. Bush. You get the idea. Bob Odenkirk was just like, you'd always wonder, like, hey, what's going on with David Cross? He's out here killing it. What's going on with Bob Odenkirk? Meanwhile, apparently he wrote, like, half of the great comedy films that you've ever seen in your life. And then, oh, late in his career, he just decided, I'll do, like, a little bit part on... Uh, on Breaking Bad. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm in one of the most critically acclaimed shows of all time. Oh no, it ended. Oh, look, we run it back. We run it back one more. A lot of people say it's even better. The dude's in the post now. He's gonna put him in the post. The dude's in nobody. Guess what? This motherfucker, he's 80 years old. He's John Wick now. Oh, we, we the audiences go crazy when they see him in Little Women. He's going nuts, man. He's, he's threatening Quentin Tarantino for the number one open foot fetishist on the planet. But unlike Quentin Tarantino, nobody gives him any flack for it. Quentin Tarantino, people are like, well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood might be one of the best movies ever made, but Margot Robbie's feet really took me out of it. People, they, you try to bully Bob Odenkirk for his foot fetish. People are like, Get, leave him alone, leave him alone. Special attacks, Bangsy in fantasy, extreme violence, falling sequence, heroic sacrifice, and of course, male protagonist. That's God of War 1. That's God of War 3. <laughs> yeah, my ass is going to share um, my results over the fucking phone. I'm going to click that button, Google Voice my mom, and say, Mom, just so you know, I got today's Gamedle keywords in six guesses. <laughs> what was it? It was God of War 3. That's nice, honey. That's a WhatsApp? Not much, brother. What's up with you? Don't tell me what WhatsApp is. I'm 34 years old, okay? Or don't ask me what WhatsApp is. Are you too old to learn anything new? No, I'm just fucking too old to learn a new social media app. I'm too old to learn a new messaging app. I'm definitely old enough to like learn how to you know, use a string cutter to um, get fucking sick-ass edges on my lawn. I'm too old to be like, we don't like, the, we don't like the billionaire who founded WhatsApp anymore. We're all moving to hot chat. We got hot chat for 11 years. We don't like the billionaire that runs hot chat anymore. We, we want a, some new billionaire made an app that cloned hot chat. It's called Cool Talk. Everybody get on Cool Talk. I'm too old to run. You know what? I'm old enough to have done that shit before, which is why I'm not going back. 11,000 gamers can't be wrong. The Logitech G95 TKL 10 keyless light speed. Light speed. Light speed fucking. Fucking what light speed? Hyper light. Maybe it's a hint. Hyper light drifter. <laughs> it's not in the hyper light drifter saga, unfortunately. It did come out on one of the systems of all time, though. But it, it does not involve fantasy, science fiction, or any of these genres. Let's call it a first-person shooter. Let's call this Deus Ex 1 from id Software. Sorry, it's from the Unreal Engine, but it is later than the year 2000. There is either stealth or science fiction in it. It's either a shooter or a role-playing game. It's first-person and third-person. You know what this fucking tells me. First-person and third-person shooter science fiction Fallout 3, which was probably not made in the Unreal Engine, but we're just looking for more greens. We get as many greens as possible, okay? Now look at this. We know now that it is a stealth game that is in the first person and the third person between 2000 and 2008. Unreal Engine, I don't care. 
Well, it's just, I'm happy it's green. It's Rainbow Six th Three. It's Rainbow Six Vegas. Ah, okay, it's a tactical first-person, third-person stealth shooter. Dude, we're getting lots of greens. It came out in the year 2000 to 2006. It's Jagged Alliance 2. I don't even know. It. Wait, hang on. Ubisoft was involved in its creation. It's Ghost Recon. Full Spectrum Warrior? <laughs> it's Tom... Clancy's Splinter Cell. I guess it is a. I guess that's fair. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need your fucking hint. We're gonna get one for real. It's earlier than two thousand five. Let's start with Splinter Cell One. Boom. Time. We got there. You know what's crazy? As I thought, we would maximize the greens in order to create a situation where the hint would help us, but just by maximizing the greens, we narrowed it down enough that I could get it. Who would have thought? I know I've said this before. So I bought the first Splinter Cell, and I mean, it's crazy because this came out in 2002. All I can tell you is that at the time, this game looked so fucking good that I was like, this is like real life. You don't understand, bro. The lighting played a role. You could stand in the shadows and shit, and when you stood in the shadows, Sam Fisher went beep. Okay, but anyway. Splinter Cell Pan uh, Pandora Tomorrow. Introduce spies versus mercs gameplay. You think it's fun when you're in like Call of Duty Warzone and you kill somebody and you hear their last words? Call of Duty Warzone. Oh my mother. You could. There was spies versus mercs. Spies had to like do -do 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 -do, heist a bomb. Mercs played in the first person and tried to shoot the spies down and stop them. Okay. So it was like hide and seek. But the greatest innovation in gaming. When a spy got a merc in the chokehold, it opened up comms so the spy could whisper in the ear of the mercenary. So you'd be playing as like in first person and then just all of a sudden you'd lose control. You'd be like this and then you'd hear like, you know, Leroy Jenkins. It was, it was ahead of its time. That's all I'm going to say. No, people, I'm not going to say people didn't say slurs back then. But, I mean, that's like modern PC gaming. Back then, it was a lot of, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger soundboards. So they would, like, grab you, and then you'd hear, like, who is your daddy, and what does he do? Get to the chopper! I'm a cop, you idiot! And you'd be like, okay, you got me again. POV, it's season three of Dark on Netflix. This is you, this is you, this is you. This is you, this is you, this is, anyway. Um, these motherfuckers definitely just invented, like, the V2 rocket, in my opinion. I'm going to say this is 1931. Oh! <laughs> hmm. POV, it's season two of Dark on Netflix. I'm going to say this is 19... Men don't wear this in public anymore. What, what even is this? Is there, like, a watch connected to this, or... Is that just a, like a to keep your vest on tight? It's a watch chain. I don't know. This is, is this the Chris Nolan IMAX reel for Oppenheimer? By the way, I was gone for three days. I came back. We got no Rotten Tomato score for Oppenheimer. We got no Rotten Tomato score for Barbie. Movie critics, like, what are you doing? These are big movies. Don't they come out this Friday? You're gonna tell me, Chris? Nolan's not screening Oppenheimer for, for critics? Come on. Come, he knows he's getting at least a mid-80. Spoilers? What do you mean spoilers? This shit happened 80 years ago. Embargo lifts tomorrow. Just saying. This is a little scary. A little scary. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's Greta Gerwig. Bro, there's a strike. Bro, the movies are still coming out. The critics aren't on strike. They're just not working. There's a, there's a semantic difference, but it's a, a market difference. This, this is like 1912. 1924. Okay, now we're talking. Something I was alive for. This is like Greece 2002. 
2009? Are you crazy? 2000, what did they take the, pan, uh, the picture on? A Game Boy camera? Well, I'm already washed today. We might as well just do our best. Uh, 1927? Somewhere in there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The first millennial. What is she saying right now? I think she's saying like, um, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Um, you do you. Uh, cool waistcoat, not. <laughs> Ice cream, yum, yum. <laughs> Champagne, yum, yum. Mmm, no spicy. Oh, man, so true. It's probably like 1949. Oh! Pretty horrible performance here. Not bad, though. Like, that last one wasn't bad. The overall thing was, though. Presented by Sarah R. Lane Pedro. What's for breakfast at Cozy? I don't know why this picture pisses me off. There's no reason this picture should really piss me off. But it pisses me off, okay? It's Matt Damon. It's Killian Murphy. It's John Krasinski. It's Robert Downey Jr. And you can't see, but this is Emily Blunt right here. Can I just say, like, this is not fair. It's not fair at all. Maybe this photo wasn't meant to be, like, released. I hate what you're doing, John Krasinski. I hate what you're doing. I hate what you're doing. You're hot. Just be hot. Don't make yourself ugly and pretend like you're the same as us. I hate what you're doing, Robert Downey Jr. No disrespect. I just don't know. Like, what, do you, what is it? He, he is doing a little bit of, like, okay. Now, I'm sorry to say I kind of hate what Killian Murphy's doing here, too. I'm not saying he's my favorite person of the bunch. I'm just saying I, I got to pour one out for Matt, Matt Damon here, who's just taking a normal photo. Everybody else, I don't know what they're doing. Everybody else is like the, they've only seen other people get their photos taken, so they're like, what do I do? Matt Damon is like, I think he probably just wanted to smile politely, but everybody else brought this unhinged energy, and he's like, I got to amp it up a little bit at least, but just a little crazy to me. Also, don't eat pizza celebrities this is pr professional came in with this thin crust pizza hey just me and my friends enjoying my favorite pizza place in new york you've never been there eating your fucking micro greens rocket salad putting a pizza in the photo just so people think you're relatable just like them anyway i don't know i'm gonna say <laughs> hmm this is new york city of course the only place that sells pizza somewhere you know what i bet they're in soho I bet they're on. I bet they're at the friend's apartment building. Um, I'm going to say that this is. I'm going to go 2021. I'm going a little late on this one. 2023. You were two years off. The cast of Oppenheimer being photobombed by John Krasinski. Can you not use that word when you're talking about Oppenheimer? A little insensitive. I read an interview recently with um, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. He talks like Tony Stark now. Or maybe he made Tony Stark talk like him. But I thought he would just be like a normal guy. And he would, they would ask him questions and he would answer them. But every single one was like, we are in a war for Hollywood right now. Okay? And you got to pick a side. I'm like, dude, brother, they just asked you... How you feel about Oppenheimer opening up against Barbie? Tom Cruise is the last soldier of the Hollywood star. He is the vanguard of the old guard. And I'm like, Robert! But, you know, he's earned the right, in my opinion, to talk how he talks. Now we're talking. God, I wish this was me. <laughs> uh, to be... 42 years old in 1990 in downtown Zagreb. Can you imagine? Holy. Kendall Roy. By the way, you might have heard the doorbell. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I'm not answering. I'm at work right now. 
Jason Schwartzman, whatever you're saying, she is not interested. Or maybe you're married. <laughs> I've seen that look before. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> They rang the bell again. I'm not, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm not answering it. I took Friday off. I'm not answering it. You can drop it. You can drop it right there. If you need, if you need something from me, I'm not here. It's 1980, a couple standing in Piazza della Signora in Florence. Okay. 6,700 points. I'll take it. Yeah, this mad lad. This one's throwing me for a loop. Because it's... Not Britain, British. Stay alert, stay alive. Like this is England, but this is not England. And then this is dot com slash AU, but that's throwing me for a loop too. I don't even know if you can see this. But dot com slash AU, that's not Australia. That's like dot com dot AU. But this license plate is not British. But this cop is British. But maybe Australian cops are British. So I'm going to say this is Australia. Just being honest, I don't know what an Australian police officer looks like. I'm going to say this is 2021. It's 2016. It is Australia. A man posing while an officer takes an image as evidence of damage from a loosed tire. What's wrong with it? Matt Gross, I, th I thought I did pretty well. Oh, because it, it, so many things said Victoria. Victoria is a province in Australia. Well, I didn't know that. Because if you wanted me to know more things about your country, then have more of your country move away from this fucking area right here. Okay? You forgot about Melbourne. It's fucking in there somewhere. Okay? Tell them... T t one in seven people from, that lives... Zoop, from here needs to move over so I could learn some shit about Alice Springs or fucking let me I can't zoom it in there's not even any cities there's not even any villages here so I learned something about Norseman okay and Mount Thirsty you can't even make this up Mount Thirsty you live in Canada I don't live in Canada I live in Vancouver okay final score 31,000 not great what about northern Canada I would never be, I don't know what it is about the people, like as soon as someone gets something about their home country wrong, they're like, you should know it. If I showed a, a random picture to an American and I was like, this is in Canada, guess where it is? And their ass said like Timmins. And I was like, oh, actually that's North Bay. I wouldn't be like, how do you not know that? I'd be like, of course you don't know that because nobody fucking cares. <laughs> it's North Bay, bro. Tim Hortons, Boston Pizza. Rigney's building supplies, you know, Home Depot. It's all the same shit. Oh, what the hell are we gonna play, man? It's it's, it's a mixed up world out here. Let's let's steal. Let's steal what somebody else is playing. Let me take a, a peek here. Minecraft, no shot. Goose goose duck. An Among Us by any other name would smell as sweet. Battle bit remastered. Never gonna happen. Enter the Gungeon. Super Monkey Ball. The hell is Tetris? Tetrio. Tetrio. It must be good because Squeaks is live in the morning. The free to win online stacker game in the same genre as Tetris. It's Tetris 99. Complete 40 lines as quickly as possible. Relax or train in this never ending mode. Holy cow. All they need now is a web client. It is not unknown controller detected. Okay, so what? You don't need to know my controller. What's the button to send it straight down? Oh, dude, it's got like, oh, it's giving me motion sickness. Oh, oh, oh. I can't believe it. Oh, up sends it down? What a country. Okay, no, we're back. Okay, I mean, I could try this. I have a feeling because this is free and online, I would get uh, bodied, but I could at least give it a shot. Wait, can, I, can I at least spectate and see how it's going? All I get to see is uh, quick play game in progress. Good luck. Spectate is on the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I have decided that I don't know what's happening here. I have decided that these gamers are better than me. I'm scared. I think... 
Okay, I can't play this fast yet, but maybe one day. Wake up, honey. They made online Tetris 99 without having to get a Nintendo online subscription, and I'm about to get my ass beat. I swore in the first minute. Look at this dude setting up T-spins at like Mach 5000. Okay, realistically speaking, I should not um, worry about coming first in game one. <laughs> Let's just, you can't win every game. Let's just focus on having a good time, okay, for a bit here. I got pretty good at Tetris 99, but there's always like something implicit you need to say about Tetris 99, which is that the average person who played it was a Nintendo fan. No disrespect, I get it, in Splatoon 2, you're platinum, it probably hurts to hear the truth, but um, PC gamers versus Nintendo gamers, PC gamers are a little bit of a different breed, personally, okay? Also, the kinds of people who have been playing Tetris for 40 years are not gonna pay 60 bucks to play Tetris. They are going to um, just play the canonical best version, which is like the one that came out for the NES or something like that. And then they'll catch you when Tetrio comes out. Okay, you ready for this? You ready for this? <clears throat> I'm scared. Good luck, everybody. We're starting in one second. Now just just survive for a bit, okay? I don't even how do I how do I change who I'm targeting if I'm not on the keyboard? Oh, like that. Okay. There we go. All right. I would like to leave a two-tile well. Don't make fun of me, by the way. This is my first time playing Tetris in a bit. It takes a little bit to get everything, you know, like all the puzzle pieces back in your brain. I'm sure you're saying like, I can't, I can't. Well, I freaking can. You just got to give me some time. Let's do a hold on that one. Okay, you're going to throw some stuff at me. You're going to flash a piece on the lanes. Flash this piece on the lanes. Hey, take one of these. Get T spun. I'm dead. I died. I died. I'm dead. <laughs> I died in five seconds, okay. I just don't like that piece. I will say this is just me personally. A lot of people will probably minus two this take, but it's just one man's opinion. They should remove the bad pieces from Tetris. What if it was just line pieces? That's it, just line pieces, okay. Oh, ships raid, ships raid, ships and ships raiders. Um, I'm so sorry for what you're about to see, okay? Now, I... It's not... This is a Tetris Battle Royale. It's not realistic to think that I'm gonna win. I would love to live for a long time. Okay. Alright, I died in a millisecond. So... <laughs> I died in three seconds. Why don't you take me to Zen real quick while we wait? <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, okay? In order for me to be able to play this, like, I need to be able to survive before I lose. I can't just be killed instantly. So we're gonna need them to add lobbies and ranked matchmaking. Otherwise, like, I mean, there's just, what's the point, you know? Don't build on the garbage hole, please. Principle number one of gaming, you don't build on the garbage hole. You need an account, that's how they get you. First, you sign up thinking it's just a cool way for you to see your friends' photos. Then, uh, 10 years later, they're like, oops, we killed democracy in the United States of America. You expect me to fall for it again? I will never sign up for anything ever again. Then, next thing you know, you're in a cage match with Elon Musk, who is deceptively strong and built. Be honest with me, by the way, how good is Squeaks at this? Because that will determine whether or not I pretend to be in competition with him without him knowing that we're competing. He's way worse. Let's go. Squeaks, you you freaking suck, dude. <laughs> uh, the people told me you were ass. Don't take it. Don't put it against. Don't take it out on me, okay? Don't kill me. This is the longest I've ever lived. Freeze me. Okay, you need to get some two-tile Andes. That's, there, there's your save right there. Beautiful. Nobody's targeted me yet. Okay, you gotta, you gotta two-tile it sometimes. Go ahead and two-tile this, send them. You know what it is? 
as soon as I send lines, people are like, don't send lines at me. So then they start sending lines at me. I don't want to, what's all, what's with all the lines, brother? <laughs> Help me, I'm so scared. Go for it. That's T-spinnable. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I'm living, I'm living. The Eye of Sauron has not turned itself to me yet. I'm not even playing well, like I'm just, I'm just sending lines. And I know you're gonna say, brother, that's what Tetris is, but it kinda isn't. Okay, I've made a horrible mistake. Don't. I said don't! Wrong piece, wrong piece. Okay, okay, dude, there's no new, new record, new record. Where do we finish? <laughs> 53rd or something? He's practicing 40 lines. Okay, well that means like, if Squeaks is practicing 40 lines, that means I'm better than him right now, but that's not gonna last. Cause that is actually like, you know how like in the 90s, like your dad went to the gym and you're like, what's your routine? And he's like, I just run. That's me. Speedrunners are built different. The thing about speedrunners, I, I say this, not everything I say is a joke. Like I'm, I'm a very genuine guy sometimes. Speedrunners know how to get good at things. They know the process. So he's doing, you know, reps. He's doing progressive overload. I'm literally just like, Tetris is fun. So I'm, I'm just playing Tetris. But to get good at Tetris, it's a very millennial thing to think that you can get good at Tetris by just playing Tetris. Instead, you need your PhD in kinesiology. You need to have a sports scientist and psychologist on staff in order to stand a chance. I know where I stand. You know, if, if, we're, if life is punch out, I'm not Lil Mac. I'm like the third guy you fight in the second circuit. And I'm, I've come to, come to be okay with that because what's the other option? You gotta be okay with that. You know, not everybody's Lil Mac or Mike Tyson or Mr. Dream or Bald Bull. Some people have gotta be, I know you're gonna say I'm Bald Bull. That's very nice of you to say, it's very flattering, but I just, for me personally, I'm just not sure it's true. But I appreciate the, the gesture. I gotta say, they, they sold it as Zen and uh, 10 times they understood the assignment. This feels pretty Zen right now. Like a creative jukebox for people that were too cool to buy a first generation iPod. Oh, I was, I was in the mode, man. Okay. <laughs> I know what to do. I, I, I see my moves laid out in front of me. We place it, we freeze it. Don't get it, 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 don't I, I hate my positioning already. I've made a mistake. Build it, uh, break it down and rebuild it. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. Hang on. It's a new record. I've survived my first onslaught. <laughs> I didn't say it was pretty. I'm just saying I survived it. Oh. <laughs> the girl from Ipanema something something name. Bad? Worse? Give me something good, bro. Hang on. I built on the motherfucking garbage hole. Get me. Get, get thee to, get thee to a nunnery! 30 players remain. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Oh, I, I, I put it down wrong. I, I keep, I got, I got weird muscle memory going on. It's not right. Did you see that? That's good muscle memory. Needless T-spin. There but for the grace of God go I, brother. No, brother, they'll expect one of us in the wreckage. I've made a mistake. Oh. No! Okay, 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 you know what? In this house, we focus on the positives. <laughs> oh, go, 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 go. Okay, okay, okay. Go. Dude, we're so back. We're so back. Zen me. Zen me. Oh, okay. Whoo, 
that'll get the blood pumping. Hmm, now you just bring it back. It's the start of Dream Lover by Mariah Carey. I hear it. Dream lover, come rescue me. Embarrassed with a little double drop there, but that's, that's okay. So be it. We're recognizing patterns. Me, when I am an evolved brain of a, uh, a brain of an evolved primate, I should say, we are recognizing patterns. Hey, did you know that Coco the Gorilla was bullshit, dude? They sold me that Coco the Gorilla knew sign language. But they're out here dragging Coco's ass on Twitter now. I'm not taking Coco's side, by the way. I'm taking the side of science. I'm just wondering where the scientific literature is. I guess what I'm trying to say is, did that motherfucker know sign language? Or is it like a Clever Hans phenomenon? And which one is... It's Clever Hans, right? That's not the, one, the ancient internet video of the dude dying because he had intercourse with a horse? I know there's two very... Two horse videos that are in the Internet Library of Congress. One of them is Clever Hans. What's the other one? That's Mr. Hans. Thank you. You can see the confusion. Bro, what? Some of you weren't on the Internet in the year 2003. And it shows. And that's a, you know what? That's a cross you're going to have to bear forever. It's okay. I, I haven't been on the Internet forever. Like, I wasn't on the Internet with Al Gore in like 1983. You ever realize how horny the 90s were when it comes to like R&B music? Too Close by Next is a song, it's basically about getting a boner while you're dancing. And if you're saying, no it's not, I assure you, yes it is. Like, in no uncertain terms. It says, all the songs on you requesting, we dancing like we're naked, ooh, it's almost like we're sexing. Yeah, you know I like it. I try, but I can't hide it. You know what I wanna do? Something like that. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm ready. Or how about, um, you're horny, let's do it. Riding my pony, my saddle's waiting. Come and jump on it. Great start. They know, oh, they know I'm a streamer. <laughs> All right, great start. Take me back to Zen. That one, we, we just made a mistake. It happens. Why are you being weird? That song's just about horses. <laughs> back to, back to Thwomps. If it's about horses, I apologize, because I will not let my daughter play that song at her birthday party, okay? So I apologize to Genuine, who I think was being allegorical in the song. I think the saddle is a workplace, and he is a boss, and thus I don't support him. Okay, there's a little double tap. I'm, that, that's my mistake. I'm double tapping the controller. Chat, how do they target him? Don't tell them, please. They might be a good Tetris player who struggles with the interface. I need all the help I can get. He spins single. I, am I uh, correct in the assumption that if you go to TetrisCon and you do a T-spin single, the, uh, all the cool kids there will um, pull down your pants and steal your lunch money. They'll say, what is this nerd doing a T-spin single for? Doesn't he know that it's just better to do a combo instead? That's correct, okay. You would think people who have had their pants pulled down and their lunch money taken wouldn't be so quick to inflict that pain on others, but you know? It's the cycle of, of trauma. Hurt people hurt people. Or something. I don't really know. I saw that in a Jonah Hill text. And he's been in a lot of good movies. So, I trust him. Uh, moving on. Um, NL, you don't know? You don't know? What, what don't I know? I was camping. I was away for the last two months. What did I miss? I'm out of the loop about Jonah Hill. Don't ask, because people, first it's like a joke, and then they go and they actually start arguing with about it, and then all of a sudden people are talking about Adam22 in my chat, and I'm like, I, I resent even being forced via social media to know anything that's going on in anybody's life except my own. Okay? Except for the National Basketball Association, which is, in my opinion, the greatest sports league on the planet. I mean, I just think it's crazy the way they're 
honey dick and dame right now like dude he was so loyal for your franchise just trade him to the one team that he'll accept a trade to now nah, he ran from the grind bro he gave his best years to portland i think i don't know i only started pretending to watch basketball like a couple of months ago you ever think about how badly we've fucked with our brains like all the emotions instincts habits etc etc honed over thousands and thousands of years why did i say thousands <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years of evolution i'm joking okay you get the idea um to save our lives to save to save us in situations that warrant using optimizing every system in your body unifying it towards a common goal of escaping a predator catching prey that'll keep you alive telling the funniest joke ever at a house party thus increasing your social capital within your in-group and then here i am like summoning everything that my brain has all that stuff that it that it worked for that you know past humans died to create i'm using all of those systems to stack blocks like if i was my brain i would feel a little bit betrayed i secreted a day's worth of adrenaline out of your kidneys for this for blocks for blocks i would be mad if i were my brain i would be mad well that's a sentence for you i like the z piece based on vibes i like the the red z piece i don't really vibe with the green z piece and I, I can't really come up with a good explanation because it's just a joke. Now we gotta break this thing down and don't have me break it down for nothing. I wanna see y'all on your baddest behavior. Lend me some sugar. I am your neighbor. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm not that bad, don't panic. You need that? Not this one. This one. Get over. Oh, I could have done it too. I just decided it had to be perfect. <laughs> and we were, we were cooking something at the top there. We were cooking something at the top. Oh, okay, okay. Dude, we got, a, we got an actual sports arc going here. Right now you're watching... <clears throat> right now you're watching the Washington Wizards. Just being real with you, you don't really expect them to compete this year. Sure, they got Kyle Kuzma. They got Jordan Poole. But like, you'd be a, if they made the playoffs, you would be like, wow, that's a Cinderella story right there. But you never know how sports will go. You know, in a few years, maybe they've done some rebuilding. Maybe they're no longer a laughing stock. Maybe they could, you know, get some good draft picks, make a big splash in free agency, and then lose to whatever team LeBron James signs on with at the end of the 2026 offseason. Like, there's, there's aspirations for us here, okay? It's the Wizards. Please, I'm a Canucks fan. I, I have to delude myself into thinking that there's a chance. Otherwise, what are we doing here? Did you know... Sorry. I saw it in chat. I had to take it. Did you know that LeBron James is French for the Bron James? Huge if true. I did not know that. I don't speak French. Well, I speak... <clears throat> Un petit peu. The crowd goes wild. My multilingual streamer. Please don't say every game of this makes me feel like I'm Tom Holland in that video. I do spend enough time on Twitter to know which video you're referring to. 
Maybe it's time to try a little ranked. But I, like, I'm really resistant to sign up for an account for anything, man. Just being honest. I think it... Maybe this is ignorant of the principles of software engineering. I don't think it's worth making an account for anything these days. I think we're going to look back on, like, the 2010s and, and now into the 2020s. And we're going to say, like... One of the great errors of, of that time was that you had to link your Google, Facebook, or Apple account with everything. You can't just like order something anymore. You can't just order something. Would you like to make an account on the Aritzia website? No, I just, I'm, I just like to buy my wife a, a jacket. Can we do that? I've already entered my address and everything. Yeah, but if you, you you'll get access to exclusive Sales and say no, I won't. You did not exclusive. I'm not saying there's no sales. I'm saying it's not exclusive. You you printed off a damn sign and put it in front of your store. How exclusive could it be? I think you're lying to me. But if it helps me get some free dopamine in Tetris, sure, I'd probably take them up on it. But that's just because that actually means something to me. I know I keep talking about this, but like for my daughter's first birthday. It was like a, a formal-ish event. Not for her, but for us. But she did wear, like, the hombok. So I guess for her as well. But I'm just saying she had no choice in the matter. <laughs> anyway, I got a suit from a store called Indochino. Indochino, if you're listening, you know my email address because you send me 10 emails a day. If you want to buy my silence to not say what I'm about to say, the clock is now ticking. I bought a suit from Indochino. Suit looked nice. It's now useless to me because I've lost 40 pounds. But maybe one day I'll gain them back. I got nothing against the suit is what I'm trying to say. But every single day since I bought the suit, September 2020, they email me twice daily. Hey, we got a sale on suits. They literally started the day I bought the suit. Surely there must be more sophisticated targeting data available. You know what I mean? Like I literally just bought the thing that you're trying to get me to buy. You should, the only thing you should know about me is that at present, I don't need a suit. But for some reason, the only thing that you know about me is that I bought a suit and your algorithm is going, this motherfucker loves suits. <laughs> He's an easy sale. I'm not an easy sale. I bought my first suit when I was like 32 years old. I'm one of the hardest suit sales you'll ever see in your entire life. Your algorithm's making a mistake. Just like I made a mistake here. 10 times in a row. We're looking for a green piece. We got a green piece. We're looking for a blue piece. Beautiful. That's bad. That's horrible. You got me, kid. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna play 1v1 ranked. You, you lost your mind? 1v1 ranked Tetris? What do you think this is? Ground Control Arcade in Portland... I was gonna say Portland, San Francisco. They wish. Portland, Oregon? Exactly. I'm going up over and over against the best 160 Tetris players on Earth. And also probably a couple of people who were like, I'm gonna stream snipe this guy, and then got their ass beat and said, never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna stop pretending to work remotely and start working remotely. Come on, NL, come on. Nobody gets work done on a Monday. Don't be a narc. Come on, brother, it's Thirsty Tuesday. Nobody gets work done on Tuesday. Don't be crazy. NL, it's Wednesday. Bro, it's hump day. Nobody gets any work done on a hump day. Bro, it's Thursday. It's Thirsty Thursday. Little bro actually thinks people work on a Thursday. It's Friday, dude. Nobody's in my office. Nobody gets anything done anyway. And yet somehow the GDP goes up like 2.7% a year. Doesn't, doesn't make any damn sense. Because inflation's 10%? Bro, that was one time. Chill, okay? 
is still that high? Some of you have not read the Fed meeting from last two weeks ago, okay? Everyone just chill for a second. I got a, I got a real question. I made a mistake. I've doubled down on my mistake, but that's okay. We got out of it. There, but for the grace of God go I. We just get a KO. Did we just become best friends? KO'd the sauce boss. Wasn't even an anonymous user. I KO'd someone who has an account. Take that chatter. See, I projected strength when I was weak. So nobody messed with me when I was going through it. Inspirational. That's rule number one of being a tet Tetris boss. Rule number two is we'll worry about that later. Oh, okay. Not bad though, not bad. We were doing something there. Now keep the pressure on in Zen mode. Treat Zen as if it's the real deal here. By the way, does this ever get harder? So I feel like I'm not training myself at the best of my ability right now. I know I'm doing it inefficiently to begin with, but then like I'd like to do it as efficiently as possible inefficiently. There was a, um, on, on the BC ferry that I took from basically Victoria to Vancouver, I just, I have to say basically, because otherwise some nautical nerd is actually gonna be like, actually it's from Swartz Bay. Shut up, dude. Look what you did. <laughs> Nobody even knows what Swartz Bay is. You're coming in here repping Swartz Bay. I don't know where that is. Oh, it's where the ferry terminal is. Oh, you mean Victoria? Let him go, man. Anyway, what was I talking about? Hang on, I gotta lose real quick. Anyway, long story short, long story long, they had a Guitar Hero arcade cabinet on the boat. Now, it's been a while, but I'm a millennial. Fun game. Um, I uh, I knew I could rip it up. I'm not sh I'm not saying I was gonna play Painkiller on Expert because I don't even know if they had that in the arcade version of the game. I go to the the machine to try to get change. Machine's broken. Half the arcade game is broken. Not unexpected. Change machine broken is like, okay, I get it. You hate running a business. Because that's literally how like your customers give you money. So maybe they're not running an arcade, maybe they're running like a vital piece of transportation infrastructure and like everything else is just window dressing. But like at the same time, I mean, none of that's really relevant. I was pissed is what I'm trying to say. So I didn't get to show off to my wife and daughter how good I am at Guitar Hero, so they probably like don't respect me as much anymore. So now I fucking gotta give my kid like a bigger allowance when they hit age 12 and then chat's gonna be mad at me and say like I'm out of touch. Pretty much just like started unraveling the fabric of my entire life just cause you couldn't be bothered to fix your change machine. Never ever let your brain rest. That's Tetris. Hey, we can make a, a bit here. You know how people online are always trying to sell uh, like courses for how to be like a, a stock trader, a f foreign exchange trader and stuff like that? What if we did that, but for Tetris? The number one rule of uh, becoming a Tetris superstar <laughs> is don't text her back. If you ever text her back, you will never get to Tetris Grandmaster status. That's just incel programming? Bro, they're all incel programming, okay? That's... I did see a good one. And by good one, I mean obviously like a terrible one. It was uh, what appeared to be, in my estimation, a 19-year-old that said, here's how easy it is to uh, become a billionaire. You start with $1, and then you just grow that at 2% a day. And it was like in... Eight years, you become a billionaire. And it's so easy to just get 2% a day. Like, that, just think about it like that, right? It's what, what could be easier? 2%, that's like nothing. You might be saying there's truth to that. Okay, all I would say to you right now is 
don't buy any courses because you're a mark. The second thing I would say is keep the math going, okay? Because after you become a billionaire, if you keep growing your wealth at 2% a day, within like 10 years, you have more money than exists on all of planet Earth. Let me show you how I turned my initial $300 investment into well over six figures in a span of two years by simply doing compound trading. So if you started with $300 and you grew at 2% every single day for 260 days, you're going to end up with over $11,000 in your trading account. And I know you're like, okay, but that's not six figures. Let's take that initial investment plus the gains that we made in year one and reinvest it for a second year. So we took that 11,000, almost 12,000, and we throw it back in to compound it again for a second year. We don't take out any of our profits and we keep trading for 2% every single day. The second year we end up with over six figures. That's over 400K compounded into your trading account. And you're probably sitting there like, okay, that's cool, but I have no idea how to trade, like zero knowledge, ground level, beginner. There are softwares out there that you can leverage to actually give you those type of results being a complete beginner having zero knowledge in the financial markets. One of them is called Monara, and I talk about it all the time on my platform. Now, here's the harsh reality of compound trading. 90% of you are not going to be strict enough to hold yourself accountable to your trading plan before you're able to see those gains and those profits in that account. And eventually you're going to want to pull that money out before your two years is over. You can't eat in that period. Brother, that's not the problem. <laughs> you can eat ice soup. You see that tweet? When you get paid bi-weekly, week one, Yamaha MX-7, week two, ice soup. Great tweet. We got, they got some good tweeters these days. Like the website's washed, but the talent level is still crazy. Blue Sky has a lot of the good tweeters. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure, what, here's the problem though. If only the cool people went to Blue Sky, where are they getting all their content from? They're like, please, please, can some idiots come over here so I can quote tweet dunk? And then when people say that's bullying, say no, it's not bullying, they have bad opinions. Hang on. I'm entering my good at Tetris era. Honey, please come to bed. Sorry. I'm such a shape cell. Me shape maxing when my wife tells me to come to bed. Sorry, honey. My straight piece is a green Z tonight. Okay, is there a battle royale, a ranked battle royale mode? Cause I'm not, I'm not going 1v1. No? All right, well. We're in the needle pit from Zoms. I mean, from Saw. I'm okay with that. In the whole scheme of things, considering how menacing many of the Saw setups are, I mean, Jigsaw, he's a bad dude. We don't like Jigsaw, do we, folks? Except in the movie where they de-age him by just making him wear a hat backwards, even though he's clearly a man in his 60s. That would be a good tier list, actually. YouTubers, feel free to take this one so that you have your fans build the list and then I do the content myself. But I'll just, I'm happy to be second, honestly. What about a Saw death, a Saw puzzle tier list? Because I'll be honest with you, everybody's got different phobias and stuff like that. Um, hang on, we're starting. I do not want to do the one where I have to pull out my eyeball to get a key. I think, me personally, I've got a relatively strong will to live. I think I might die. But if there were like eight of us in Jigsaw's dungeon, and then he said one of you's got to jump in there to the needle pit and get, get this key, I think I'd be like, shotgun. <laughs> I'm not saying it's gonna be pleasant, but I'm willing to take the the under on that one. I'm willing to bet that whatever he cooks up in his fucked up jigsaw brain next is gonna be worse than a pit of needles. So I'm I'm buying in on that one. I feel like everybody else is just like praying that jigsaw passes away due to old age before their turn comes up. I'm doing something actionable. A lot of people are disagreeing with me. Oh, so you want You'd rather have the eyeball? I mean, you do you, honestly. You want to pluck out your own eyeball. Again, I'm being slandered. So I'm going to slander you in return. One good slander deserves another. You want to jump into a pit of needles? No. 
I don't want to jump into a pit of needles, but I want to live. I definitely don't want to pluck out my own fucking eyeball. I know the needles would make me sick. It's all going to make me sick, brother. You're in Jigsaw's hellhole. Like, there's there's no good answer. Like, you're, you're all probably going to die. In the whole scheme of things, like, it's one of the worst ways to go that's ever existed, but one of the most merciful ways to go within the world of Jigsaw. The twisted web that he weaves with his warped sense of morality. You know, he's not a good dude. People keep acting like he's a good dude. He's not a good guy. Why do all the people at the end of Joker grab Joker out of the car and hold him up like he's a hero? Because his jokes were funny? Hey, some of those jokes are actually pretty good, I'll admit. Even if director Todd Phillips did steal them from Reader's Digest. When I told my friends I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, they all laughed at me while well, nobody's laughing now. Like, that's like a... That's a Tom Waitsism right there. That's a, if he said that in Nighthawks at the Diner, people would be like, plus two, so true. I'm pretending I'm in a jazz club right now, but actually it's a sound stage in Los Angeles. That's not an Amy Schumer joke. Don't insult the Joker like that. Look, you... <laughs> I'm not even anti-Amy Schumer, but come on. You would know if the Joker stole... Amy Schumer's jokes, because he would get up on stage and be like, my pussy farted. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just the first thing that popped into my head. I can't start the game on that vibe. Oh. I'm just vibing with the music now. If you walk into a sushi restaurant and this is playing, your ass better break out the Amex. That's all I'm gonna say. What is this? <laughs> Me seeing a piece I've seen 400,000 times before? What is this? And the award for worst use of a long piece in history goes to... Oh my god, it's me. I wouldn't do that. That's a summer home on the garbage hole. That's another summer home on the garbage. There you go. You've gotten yourself out of the garbage hole. Great work, 47. He's done it again. He's gotten himself out of the garbage hole. He's gotten himself out of the garbage hole once more. Okay, now that... From the first garbage that we were sent at the start of the game, we've, we've now recovered. We can start playing our game. Do it. Oh, holy fuck, boys. <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I thought we were playing a pretty good game there for a minute. I harbor no delusion, by the way, that we're... What are you doing? Um, that we're going to, like, get a win. Ever? But certainly not today. But what I am doing is experiencing brain death. And honestly, gleep gloop, gloop gloop. Sorry, what happened? I have to be honest with you, I feel like I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> I feel like the blocks are moving too fast. This is, uh, it, it's not a fault of me or my brain. The developers need to add an accessibility option. They've screwed me. It's not my fault. It's not my fucked up inner ear. It's not drinking too many McClays in college. I have equilibriumitis, okay? That's a industry term. It's a medical term for my inner ear sucks ass. And I would thank you to not make fun of me for it. Because I'm more than capable of making fun of myself. Thank you very much. Oh, he got back down to the bottom. That motion sickness thing was all a ruse. You know, what would have really tied that bit together is if I just threw up right there. <laughs> I give up. No, I don't give up. I'm fighting back. 
I'm playing the slowest game of all time. This is the slowest game of Tetris that's ever existed. And you know what? They're letting me. Interesting. Maybe they're more scared of me than I am of them. Not that one. This one. This one. Okay. And then you could set up a Teddy Spin. Perhaps a little ambitious. All right, that was fun. Um. <laughs> oh, what were you there? I'm gonna be honest, I got a slash marker here. Slash marker? That's Tetrio. It's not um, playable. It's just, you do, it, the, Tetrio could become the greatest Twitch meta of summer 2023. But you absolutely have to have instanced lobbies instead of just going up against the greatest Tetris players of all time over and over. You refuse to play the mode that's playable? Brother, it's because nobody's getting out of their seats for playing uh, 1v1 Tetris, you know? I know that's how they do it at the Twin Galaxies meetup in Peoria every year when Walter Day dons the striped jersey. But I'm telling you, it's just not the... It, it's 2023, man. Kids are drinking prime energy. They're getting uh, years worth of manganese from drinks that are not mandated by the FDA. It just needs to... Just needs to They need to make bubbles around the MMRs. That's the secret. Try it, you grumpy goose. I refuse to be called grumpy for being smart. If 1v1 Tetris got the blood pumping, they wouldn't call it Tetris, they'd call it Street Fighter. If 1v1 Tetris got the blood pumping, you would see it uh, getting thousands of viewers on Twitch, but instead, the World Championships of Tetris get 80 viewers, it's the 80 best players in the world, 78 of them are watching, and then there's 20,000 people watching every streamer on the planet react to ice cream, yum yum, gang gang, no spicy. The website is, uh, I, I hate to say it, I think it's a reflection of the real world, and it makes me, it makes me a little sad to say it, but... <laughs> Sorry, you, I mean, the screen is black, because, like, there's nothing to see. I'll just be honest with you. It's going to take me a bit to get to that level. It's going to take me at least two weeks of practice to get to that level. Oh, tough luck. <laughs> thought okay TMI let me guess TMI has one let's take a look at TMI's profile joined 18 months ago eat, eat me <laughs> sorry <laughs> this weekly is pain this weekly is insane how insane could it be man they just it's the same animals every time we need a Nine out of ten indie roguelite, man. Don't say Brotato. Brotato is a is a got a 100 on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.2 on IMDb, okay? Everybody likes it and some people love it, but they're those people are not me. Hades 2 coming up? Hang on. Hades 2. Release date to be announced. Will Zagreus be playable in Hades 2? Hades 2 will see players take on the role of Melano, Zagreus' half sister and fellow child of Hades. Does Zagreus sleep with Thanatos? It's also important to note that while Zagreus, Megara, and Thanatos all sleep together, this is not a requirement of being polyamorous which is not inherently sexual in nature. Who is Thanatos' girlfriend? 
Daphne is a flower nymph from the mortal realm. Currently on Olympus, she works as a fashion model and yoga instructor. Good for her. She is also the roommate of Echo and the girlfriend of Thanatos. Why was Hades alone for 13 years? On Hades' sixth birthday, Kronos ripped him away from his mother, Rhea, whom he was very close to and loved very much. As a result, Hades was left alone for 13 years within Kronos, his only interactions with others being the times that Kronos would often verbally abuse him. That's sad. That's sad. Hey, um, does Dusa have a crush on Zagreus? Dusa is friendly, shy, and playful, a great company, and likes to share gossip in their free time. She has a painfully obvious crush on Zagreus. You can even hear some sighs. I knew it. I knew it. But she's never able to express her feelings due to some strong social anxiety and also her never-ending cleaning tasks. What is the most popular ship in Hades? Thanzag is the most popular ship in the Hades fandom. When the game was released, some players caught on to the potentially romantic nature of the relationship between Thanatos and Zagreus. Why is Zagreus eye red? Zagreus has heterochromia, having inherited an eye color from each of his parents. Why is Hades' name redacted? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just seeing how deep I could go down into like the Google people also asked section before uh, it just turned into spaghetti. Read some fan fiction? Yeah, bro. I'm going to read the Iliad on stream. Uh. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Guy who is smart? Call him Carry the way he drew. I get it. It's a reference to Drew Carey, the host of The Price is Right. Question marks? He's hosting The Price is Right. I don't know what you want me to tell you. The, the dude do be hosting The Price is Right. The Drew Carey Show? I'm sorry to tell you that the Drew Carey Show stopped airing 300 years ago. The Price is He's been the host of The Price is Right since like 2007, man. 2006 even. The dude has been... He's, he's probably the smartest dude in Hollywood. Because if you got that job, you just ride it as long as you can, man. I don't... You do whatever you can to not put it in jeopardy. It's got to be the easiest job of all time, right? Drew Carey doesn't even talk that much. It, like, I mean, the host of The Price is Right doesn't even talk that much. Like, the dude just... You read, like, 11 people's names per show, and then you go, Ah, uh, is the car $11,930 or $12,441? And then the idiots in the audience are like, I know the exact price of a Kia Soul! It's $12,441! How about Pat Sajak? Bro, Pat Sajak's job is hard. Like, he's, he's retiring. He can't take it anymore. Pat Sajak, kind of an a-hole IRL. I literally don't care. He's the host of Wheel of Fortune. He's not the United Nations ambassador to South Sudan. But I'm not trying to say he shouldn't aspire to be nice. I'm simply trying to say, like, it's... Come on, man. We're holding Pat Sajak to unrealistic standards. The dude is the guy who draws the hangman board. He doesn't even write the letters. He's got his assistant to do that. Sorry, his co-worker is. I don't know the hierarchy of Wheel of Fortune. I've never seen the corporate structure. Hot take, people who bid $1 over or under on the prices right are the worst kind of people. Hot take, people who bid $1 under you are the best kind of people. People who suck at the game. People who bid $1 over, that's, that's the game, man. That's the damn game. Why wouldn't you? Look, if they bring out a bunch of like an absolutely fucking horrible looking dining set and then someone says that's $100 and then someone says that's $3,000 and then someone says that's $2,100, my ass is saying that's 101. It's that simple. I'll win the dining set. There's, there's no, you're absolutely right. There's no incentive not to just go $1 higher than, than the bid. If you can only get on one game show in your entire life, what would be the best game show to get on? And I really think it's hard to compete with Wheel of Fortune, man. 
fear factor? Okay, you're crazy. <laughs> like wheel or fortune? Let me, let me start, okay? Deal or no deal, it would be good too because you get money for literally nothing. But you also can't influence yourself on deal or no, or you can't influence the game on deal or no deal. You could just pick the chest that has like a hundred bucks in it and get screwed. On Wheel of Fortune, everybody gets whatever they earn. So if you come in second, but you got $21,000, you get $21,000. If you win Wheel of Fortune, typically you are in like the, the 20s, 20,000, maybe 30,000 if you solve the final puzzle. By the way, I don't, need, I don't want to put my good friend Daniel on blast here. I was watching his edited video of the password game, and he said we have to eliminate two letters. We should take something rare like Z and R. And I was like, R? It's literally such a common letter. They included an R, S, T, L, N, E on Wheel of Fortune. It's, it's one of the most common consonants in the English language. Anyway, on Jeopardy, you have to be really smart to win. You, if you're insanely smart, like one in 100,000 smart, you should go on Jeopardy if you only get the choice of one, okay? Because you could make like a million dollars. You just have to win a hundred games in a row. If you're not that smart and you can only go on one game show ever, don't pick Jeopardy because second place, you're probably not going to win. And second place gets like a thousand dollars and third place is like a set of steak knives or, or you're fired. I can't really remember <laughs> something like that. There's got to be others though. I'm trying to think. I have to say with all due respect and, and not much disrespect, I feel like the worst, I'm, I'm going crazy. The worst game show to go on, if you can only go on one, has got to be like Big Brother. No disrespect. If anything, it's more respectful for Daniel that he won. Because there's only like two good outcomes on Big Brother. You can win and then you get like half a million dollars for three months of your time, which is crazy. And all you had to do was deal with being cyber bullied by the craziest people on the internet. But you don't have to see that because you're inside. Then second place gets like 50,000 which I think at that point, you're like, listen, for three months, that's a good salary. But at the same time, like, it's a big drop off from first to second. You know, you were like three votes. You, you were one chore wheel rotation away from 10xing your money. And then if you come third, I think you just get a per diem. The second best outcome is getting voted in or voted out first day. So true. Susan style. Survivor? Survivor, I think at least it's shorter. I mean, my ass is not winning Survivor. <laughs> I'll start you right there. <laughs> I also think, like, who wants to be a millionaire if you're really smart is the other. I don't even know if it's on the air anymore, but that's like your other classic example. Good game. Um, just because all you have to do is answer like 16 questions. And if you get all 16 questions right, you won a million dollars. And if you get, I mean, they only really get hard until like around like question eight or something like that. And then you get free lifelines or three lifelines. I'm out on question one. <laughs> it's always like, name something you shouldn't eat. Food, candy, chewing gum, poison. The first question losses though are amazing because it's always like, they never go like, ooh, this is hard. They always go like, <laughs> I get the joke. I'm going to say poison. And you're like, or I'm going to say chewing gum. And you're like, uh. How about family feud? I, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. My, my problem with family feud from a, uh, a, a game show maxing perspective is it's one and done, right? The winning families don't come back. I mean, they come, they don't die. I just mean like they don't come back to the game show. <laughs> they do? They come back? Oh, they have family. I mean, they don't make easier game shows than that. That's true. You come back max five times. Imagine you went into your airplane toilet 
and it was skibbity toilet. Okay, what happened there? <laughs> oh, it's the other viable build. While everybody else is scaling, the, the tiger or the tiger croc parrot goes insane. And you're about to get flushed down the skibbity toilet and ejected from the hatch of a Boeing 787. But then cameraman grabs you on the shoulder and you hear the liminal space of uh, there's a room where the light won't find you. Holding hands while the walls come tumbling. And he says, don't worry. And then he flushes the skibbity toilet. And then you come out of the airplane bathroom and everybody in rows A through P is a cameraman. And, but then there's a little Easter egg at the end of the, like in, in row Q, L-M-N-O-P-Q, you see one little skibbity toilet head pop out and then it fades to black. And it, holy fuck, did you see? It looked like it was good, but I think on the flight there was still one skibbity toilet left at the end. What does this mean? Anyway. Toddlers watch that shit all the time. Bro, it's not toddlers. It's like 12-year-olds. I can tell you what toddlers are watching because my kid had her iPad in um, offline mode. So it only had like the six videos she watched most recently while we were camping. They were all YouTube shorts. Holy, man. Try to guess what movie I am making. Your first clue is a dragon head. Your second clue is a dragon wing. If you didn't get this one, IDK, brah. And it was, obviously, it was How to Train Your Dragon, but, like, and she doesn't know that. She's fucking two, she's 2.93 or something. She's only, uh, the only movie she's ever seen is all of the Toy Stories a thousand times. Hey, what, this, this was driving me crazy. Sometimes I forget what song a lyric comes from. What song, I remember I didn't have internet until, like, this morning. What song does this line come from? Forget that corny line. You're all that's waxed on my mind. Forget that corny line. What is that from? It's like a 90s, 2000s pop song. It's not Master of Puppets. It is Love Me, Love Me by Shaggy. Thank you. <laughs> You're all that wax on my mind. Forget that corner line. Ooh, boy, I love you so. Never, ever, ever going to let you go. Hey, once I get my hands on love me, love me, love me, sex machine. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. NL, would you allow yourself to be bought out by private equity? Yes. If the price was right. Absolutely. It would probably... Listen, I'm, this is just, it's a fair statement. All I would say to maybe bring you back on the my side is that you don't have to worry about it because I would cost more than I'm worth. There's a number. Definitely. I, I haven't given it any thought because streaming has zero barrier to entry. There's a number. But no one would ever pay it. Because they would, be, they would be like, how much is it worth to you? And I would give them the number, and they would say, fuck off. They would say, lose this number, don't, don't ever call us again. That's pretty, that's as much of an ethical streamer as I think you can get in this day and age. <laughs> Do you think it really was shaggy? Well, this isn't, see, you're, you're asking questions that you're not qualified to understand. It was never shaggy. Shaggy is offering... An excuse that Rick Rock can use. He's saying that Rick Rock should say that it wasn't him. Shaggy didn't do anything wrong. He was just giving him like an, an, an opportunity. He was giving him like an impression for what Rick Rock could do to get out of the situation. But, and I know Shaggy has taken issue with this in the past. And I, I, would underst I can understand why. Let me put it that way. At the end of the song, It Wasn't Me, Rick Rock realizes that it's him who caused the problem. And as a result, the mature thing for him to do is to just own up to the fact that it was him who was caught on camera and in the shower and, and so on and such as. So he's acknowledging that rather than make an excuse, he should just admit to the fact that it was him. Based, but it wasn't him. 
you need to you need to watch the song or watch the music video again, okay? Because <laughs> I feel like we're getting confused by things. That there's no reason to be confused by. Rick Rock admits it was him. Yeah, at the end he admits it was him. That's what I'm saying. Is Shaggy a gaslighter? Shaggy doesn't. Am I losing my mind? Shaggy didn't do anything. Shaggy's never been under suspicion. I know people are like, well, how did he know how to give the advice? I don't know. F fucking like 2,000 people in the chat never leave their house. They're always giving me advice on, you know, how to live a normal life. Why don't you look at the mirror, motherfucker? Shaggy looks like he's doing okay in his life. If you watch the music video, the shit is like straight out of the year 2000. He's got like a, an iPad before iPads existed. It was like, it must be in the distant future because video calling's a thing. He's sitting in a silver throne in like a velvet robe surrounded by hotties. It seems like Shaggy's doing just fine. He didn't do it. I mean, I'm not saying that Shaggy has never done anything wrong. I'm simply saying that according to the rules of the music video, we don't know that Shaggy's... Oh my God. We don't know that Shaggy's done anything wrong. As a result, like, it's not fair to, to place him under suspicion. I didn't even freeze the pill. I didn't even freeze the pill. After all that, I didn't even freeze the pill. I do like that when Rick Ross tells Shaggy he needs help, he stops doing his Shaggy voice. Rick Rock, Rick Ross. Two different guys. Rick Rock sounds like this. How could I be leaving when you turn another key? Rick Ross, bitch, I'm a monster, no good blood sucker, fat motherfucker, now look who's in trouble. As I run through the jungle, all you hear is rumble, Kanye West sample, here's one for example. Okay, it's two different people. That is not Jay-Z's verse, because Jay-Z's verse is just like a rogues gallery of Universal Pictures monsters. Godzilla, King Kong, Nosferatu, Emotep, Naksuna Moon, everybody knows I'm a motherfucking monster. <laughs> oh man, sorry. It is the worst verse of all time. It's... I'm, I don't know if people are going to hate me for what I'm about to say. I know Jay-Z is like extremely famous. I don't get it, man. Maybe I wasn't the right age for like the Blueprint Volume 2, but like at least on Monster, he's way behind the rest of the pack. You'll never recover from this. I'm just, I'm just saying. I think Bear Taffy will tell me that he is not a Jay-Z fan. Because Bear Taffy listens to good rap music. Like Aesop Rock. You ever think about how messed up it is? Forget about Rick Ross, Rick Rock. You got Aesop Rocky and Aesop Rock. This shit is confusing, man. What do you hear about Ice Cube and Vanilla Ice? I know this is an embarrassing um, admission that I've made before on stream. But I'm going to make it again. When I first heard Pretty Fly for a White Guy, I had no idea what the hell um, he was talking about when he said they didn't have Ice Cube, so he bought Vanilla Ice. I literally thought like he went to the store for Ice Cubes, but they didn't have Ice Cubes, so he had to buy like ice that was flavored like vanilla. Obviously, keep in mind I was like 10, but still. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't know. I don't have anything else. Actually, you know what? I do have something else. This one's for you, librarian. I lost a chat on the Peloton this morning. I was seven minutes in to a... I'm trying to remember the order of the ride. I think it was a 30-minute Leanne Hainsby pop ride. And I got a, a ping, a push notification. One of my Peloton followers joined in the ride. I recognized them. I gave them a high five. They gave me a high five. I said, let's have a gentleman's race. Immediately switched the leaderboard to friends only to, to put on blinders, to get rid of all the other 50-year-old endodontists that are on the leaderboard. I said, it's just you and me. Now I started, it is you, motherfucker. <laughs> I started 70 kilojoules up because I was like maybe five and a half minutes into the ride. And then I, I did... I was going at like a 5 out of 10 before, 
I took it up to eight and a half because I was like, I've seen this guy's outputs. I know I'm in trouble. And I was, before I needed to start grinding, I started grinding. And I grinded that whole ride and just watched you every song pull back like four kilojoules here, seven here until you, you passed me when I was in the cool down and you still had like, I don't know, seven minutes left of your ride. For real, it was very motivating for me. That's good to hear because I do think that you probably, you shattered my PB, which is a ride that I've only done once, you know, like I've only ever hit that output once in my entire life. When you think about it, you both won. You know what? True, true. That's pretty true. What was your final output? Because I feel like you were trending to like, um, to have like a, a 510 kilojoule 30 minute ride, which makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I, I put out like a 380, which is probably, you know, in the top like 10 rides I've ever done. But but I'm, I'm not putting out a, a 500 anytime soon. That's just holy. My PB's 503. That's really good, honestly. Chat, you should give this man a round of applause. That's a really good score. Round of applause for cheating with a juiced bike. I got you on camera, motherfucker. I've, <laughs> there's no way. Film yourself taking the ride. I'm, I'm joking. Mm, on the other hand, you never know. I'm, just, I'm not saying. I'm just saying you never know. That's all I'm saying. So if, you're, if your bike is not... Um, if your bike's not juiced, you certainly will have no problem uh, going to a... a impartial third party, say like a, a, a quality in in suites in South Bend, Indiana, and then replicating the ride that you just did, it shouldn't be a problem. My PB is 555. Oh, okay, you're all very strong. Congratulations. You know, it's fucked up. You got me feeling like a piece of shit. My PB on a 30 minute ride is like 421, which is really good. I don't want to like make this like I'm, I'm not just trying to get some of my ego back, but like I, I got followers on the Peloton, OK? And I got people that I follow and I'm smoking them all except for two people. One of them happened to show up on the ride today, but there's like. And I'm not every I mean, we're all just trying to get stronger. OK, I'm just saying. Today, I got farmed. Oftentimes, I'm doing a little bit of farming. Oh, that's that's it. That's it. Have you ever been to Dude Chillin' Park? Listen, we're not talking about that right now. But yes, I have been to Dude Chillin' Park. The park's so named because there's a statue in it that looks like a dude chillin'. Of course, I've been to Dude Chillin' Park. Peloton should be giving you money for all the Pelotons you've sold. That's how I felt today when I, after that ride, I did my 30 minute Samuel classic rock ride and two and a half minutes into Highway Star, motherfucker just hard froze. I want to write him. Do you know how many Pelotons I've sold to people accidentally just by talking about it on the... I didn't. Instead, I just took three minutes to restart and then I lost the three minutes in the middle, I lost all that output. So I was peddling like a son of a gun to try to at least have a respectable output at the end. So Kip Casper didn't look at my ride after that and say, boy, he probably got really gassed trying to stay ahead of me, even though it was true. Nice weekly you've got there, Scooty. Would be a shame if um, somebody was to come along and completely destroy the meta. Oh, you almost had me there. You almost had me on that one. This is the meta? Look at me, Randy. I am the meta. Why don't you take some of this? I might as well buy chocolate, but for whom? Maybe for you? Round 13? We're about to go flawless mode. Oh, uh, they got the same squad. 
fuck. <laughs> oh, the mushrooms. Note to self, buy mushrooms. Buy, yeah, 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 buy mushrooms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. buy mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't let them get this scaling, man. Because if we, if we live long enough to get this scaling meta, we're in a lot of trouble. Oh, it's over. You're cooked. Let's go. It broke? You broke it? Whatever. Break that. No spicy. You unlocked Urban City! <laughs> yes! Urban City. Urban City. It's in alphabetical order, probably, I'm sure. Urban City. Wizard School. No, spicy. How's the music? I better hear, like, what this is... The hell is this? Random was still checked. Oh, no. <laughs> Urban City. Urban City, Japan. Are doctors psychos? You can't cut people up and be okay. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying when you say the things that you say? He's kind of right. I don't think that they're kind of right. I don't think what, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think you have to be crazy to be a doctor. I think you just have to love money. I'm not even like making a joke. I'm getting a lot of plus twos, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, is it? I mean, maybe you say you get into being a doctor for money, but like, or sorry, for, to help people. But like, you probably wouldn't have been that interested if it wasn't for the economic incentives, right? Being a doctor sucks for like 15 years straight. I'm not hating on doctors, like, you know. I'm, I, I get that going through like residency is, well, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna apologize. Someone said you gotta be crazy to be a doctor. They you said you gotta be a psycho. I don't think you have to be a psycho to be a doctor. I think you just have to get like an A plus in fifth grade science and then structure your entire identity around being good at school. And that's good. I'm, everybody hates me now. <laughs> Everybody hates me? Hangover from the Salmonella arc? What, what, I don't even understand how we got to this point of the conversation. What are you even talking about? What is it you say you do here? Yeah, I don't think I would want to be a doctor. For a couple of reasons. The process of becoming a doctor definitely seems hard. Sorry if that's controversial. I definitely also... I don't ever want to tell anybody that they're dying. So that really narrows down like the number of, of fields that you can really like thrive in. You could lie, yeah, but they'll find out. They'll be like, how'd those test results come back? You'd be like, oh, everything's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I didn't lie. I was trying to save their feelings. I didn't want their feelings. I didn't want to be the, the bearer of bad news. I think I could be like a podiatrist. Like as a podiatrist, you may discover that somebody's dying, but it's not your job to tell them. You refer them to uh, like another specialist who then run you go like your feet look fucked up <laughs> and then it's not funny but I'm, it's it's funny because I'm such a coward I'm trying to find I'm trying to get all the benefit of being a doctor without any of the consequence that's what's funny it's not funny that this made up person is dying okay you'd be great in radiology it's no work it's basically like streaming what'd you say to me that's a GP, you just refer them to a specialist and you make like 250 grand a year. I don't know, man, my, my family doctor, she's busy like all the time. Isn't there like a doctor who makes a lot of money and like doesn't have to work that much, like only like two days a week and never has to tell anybody that they're dying? Cause I don't wanna worry about dying. I only wanna worry about the sunshine girls, something like that, plastic surgeon. Yeah, but you gotta have like a, like a 7.0 GPA for that. Anesthesiologist? Okay, that one you're never telling anybody that they're dying, but you could kill people. 
I'm assuming that the average anesthesiologist probably kills like 0.5 people per career. Hang on. There's, there's some cooking to be done here. That's what we need. Scooty, don't look. I'm, I'm losing my mind, man. I can't fucking do it, dude. Oh, this one's for all the marbles. Here you go. I'm peeling my level 311 taper. Ah, we needed to make one more space, the Pteranodon. <laughs> I've never peeled something in the I've never peeled a taper in the shop with a Pteranodon available too. Now we got the librarian sap posting saying this is a weekly for farming sloths. Librarian, know your place. You take the funny bits and you condense them. You don't, don't debase yourself by getting down into the muck of super auto pets with the rest of us. That's not the best use of your, your talents. Be nice. It's the nicest thing I've ever said to anybody. I didn't say get back in the editing minds. You said get back in the editing minds. <laughs> I said... Know your place, okay? That's, there's a difference. That's worse? I know, that's why it's funny. I know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. Can someone tell me what Shaggy did? I'm just being sincere. It's not for the bit or anything. Shaggy didn't do anything. All he did in the song was give advice to Rick Rock. Now, the advice was to gaslight his girlfriend. I'm not saying that Shaggy's like a good guy in the song. I'm simply saying that he's not being accused of it. He's a bad influence? Sure, so what? You don't, it's not illegal to be a bad influence. Again, I'm not saying you have to hand it to him. It's also not illegal for Rick Rock to cheat on his girlfriend. Wait. If anything, she should go to prison because she caught them on camera. Which I think it depends what state you live in. But that could be like a serious offense. Lady, you better call a lawyer. <laughs> it's private property. She's fine. Uh, what if it's, it's Rick Ross's house? Or apartment. Sorry, Rick Rock. I got confused again. You should check out the Subway subreddit again. Okay, just give me a... Listen, just give me a damn second, okay? I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. I haven't been in about a week, so just give me a second here. Can please sort by top this month. Someone forgot to put the bread in the fridge last night. It's just a picture of a bunch of dough. Hey, I'm just... Like, I'm, I want to see posts that validate what... I said about Subway, okay? A lot of these are like, my bosses suck, that's fine. Walked into work today, my boss just handed me this. 12 inch meatball sub, malted rye bread, mozzarella toasted spinach, tomatoes, capsicum, onions, jalapenos, pickles, blue cheese dressing, habanero hot sauce, cracked pepper, rock salt. Please, please, can I have an absurd amount of jalapeno? Fuck me up, fam. God bless and good day to you. Please check order contents are correct. Lady came in, ordered some of everything, then complained. That's got to be like, I've never worked at Subway. I think that would be what would get me to quit. Or at least not like the job. The number of times that people, like, I give people exactly what they want on their sandwich, and then they go, this thing's fucked up. Hate to throw out bread. Rate my bread. Subway should offer fruit as an alternative choice to chips. This shit way too expensive now. First time going to Subway in 10 years the other day. Got a foot-long Italian sub with lettuce, salami, ham, cheddar, and Chipotle Southwest. $16.59, no drink. They got to chill. I will never go back to Subway. Could have gone to Chipotle and got way better and more food for the same price. Top comment. Get the app and order using coupons. Man, fuck you. <laughs> hey, you hate the business? Download their app onto your cell phone so they can advertise to you. You freaking fed? I don't even know what that means, but it's what you are. 
No shot, man. Got a foot-long sweet onion today for lunch, 13 bucks. It's the, what they're doing with Subway is criminal. Everyone who's ever worked at Subway should be in prison forever, in my opinion. Based, so true. Even the, yes, even the food service workers. Sorry, you should have gotten the job at Jersey Mike's if you didn't want to rot. By the way, Subway could easily buy my allegiance and get me back. Obviously, at this point, if they could make the sandwiches taste good, they would have done it by now because they've been in business for 40 years. They can't do that. What they could do is make them 40% of the price that they presently are. They could take off 60% of the price. I would pay $11 for a basic foot-long sandwich. It's 2023, I understand that it's hard to run a restaurant. Input costs are way up. Inflation has, has been high for like a year and a half. But I'm sorry, you can't, you can't charge $16.59 for a, for a Subway sandwich. It's just, it's madness. Did I tell you, by the way, that the last time I went to Subway, and that was like the, the genesis of, of this madness for me. The last time I went to Subway, the tomatoes had no inner layer. It was just a wagon wheel. It was one red wheel with red spokes coming out of it and then like a red center. There was no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to get into like a semantic debate, but there was no inner tomato. There was nothing in the cloister. It is better than a tomato that has 45% hard white part. I don't know what the word is either. I'm not gonna get up on your grill for that one. That's just, uh, that, as far as I'm concerned, that might be the, that might be the preferred nomenclature. Live. Oh. <laughs> pith. Tomatoes got a pith. I didn't. I thought that was just for oranges, but it's a crazy world we live in these days, I suppose. You know what the crazy thing is? After talking about Subway, I still. Like, my body is like, oh, I want some Subway. Even though I know it's bad. You are lost. I'm not going to get it. I'm just saying, like, I have to fight. I have to fight my brain a little bit. It's not only bad, it's expensive. I know. Average customer. 12 inch tuna sub. Cut in half with clean knife, please. What kind of psycho would write that on the <laughs> special section? <laughs> Cut in half with clean knife. Brother, it's one of the few restaurants you can police what you're getting, all you got to do is take your ass to the damn store. You are asking for, it's like writing don't, pi don't piss on my sandwich. I was going to say spit, but then I read piss in chat. Brother, they're pissing on. They're, that's the only one they're going to piss on. Italian herbs and cheese, shredded mozzarella, 12 inch tuna, toasted, lettuce, spinach, tomatoes, cucumber, green pepper, black olives, onions, oil, regular mayonnaise, honey mustard sauce, sweet onion, chicken teriyaki, Peppercorn ranch sauce, fuck off. Four sauces, eat shit. No subs. One year! Four sauces? Jeremy, four sauces? Salt, less. Oregano, less. And a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. Get a life. They are the reason the knife is gross. Plus two on that comment. Prices are getting out of hand. I work next door to a Subway. I would eat there every day if I could afford it, but I'd go broke. For the same price as a pizza sub from the Subway next door, I can get the same order from Mr. Sub delivered via Uber Eats or a whole pizza delivered for less. With the prices so high, it's easy to shop elsewhere. I just don't understand why the prices are getting so high. Top comment. Franchise owners and employees on here. We hate coupons. Stores make no money. The franchise owners, $15 sub, take it or leave it. I, it, was a, it was a meme. I understand now. $19 for a foot long? Is this normal? Flagstaff, Arizona. People really do... The, the kind of person that would order a sandwich like this from Subway, this is the kind of person... You should have to see someone order something from Subway before you vote. Because if someone... If, if I see the person that I'm going to vote for walk into Subway and say, give me a 12-inch 
Veggie Delight, Italian herbs and cheese, pepper jack cheese, toasted, black olives, more, oil, more, mayonnaise, more, buffalo sauce, peppercorn ranch, Baja chipotle sauce, more, roasted garlic, aioli, black pepper, salt, less Parmesan cheese, more. I'm not voting for you. You're not suited to lead. Power will go to your head. Five sauces and then hidden more, less, more, less, more, less. You're not suited for leadership. That's too specific. It's not just that the sub sounds disgusting. It's that they're... They're a, they're a dictator, man. They order everyone around. So true, so true. Me, walk up to counter. Worker, foot long. Wait, me, walk up to counter. Foot long white bread. Worker, six inch or foot long? <laughs> Dude! Oh, man. Classic. This never happened to me, but I could imagine. Thoughts on the new Subway series? Oh, here we go. They're so stupid. No customer goes to Subway to not get what they want. It's a pain for the employees. Now you have to remember what comes on the sub instead of just asking what they want. If I want no onion, I have to ask for it at a drive through It's just risking for mistakes to be made. Plus, is definitely moving to this as the default, and they're $3 more expensive than the classic sandwiches. Thank you! Last week, I couldn't locate or describe my usual sandwich, so I just went to Mr. Sub. Okay, that person, I should vote for them because I don't have the strength to walk into a Subway and then walk out. I would just be like, I guess lunch is going to suck today and be expensive. They actually, they went and they said, I respect myself too much for this. And then they walked out. I'm sure the new sandwiches will still retain Subway's well-known low quality ingredients, malaise taste and high prices served by overwork, underpaid, disgruntled workers. So in that way, things will stay the same. Stupid considering every customer I have always just wants the sandwich their own way. It's a cash grab. I'm irritated I can't order online because I can't remove items I don't like. I only like lettuce, pickle, and cucumber for veggies on my subs. I also don't like most sauces. Just seems like too much of a hassle. I'm going to Mr. Sub. Bro, Mr. Sub is, is the sandwich store of the summer. Anyway, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. Enjoy yourself. I will see you tomorrow. Me and Daniel are going to do a little streaming tomorrow. See you then. Gotta catch a hunker, a grouper, or a tuna. Gotta catch a hunker, a haddock, or a cod. Gotta catch a hunker, albacore. What the hell, man? How did I get nothing from the sea? Now we gotta switch it up slightly Don't remember How does the tune go during this part? Oh, Jesus!